Here, all what I've been working on trying to achieve is to apply the design method of biogeometry into urban, designing urban forms. So basically urban spaces are composed of three components, public spaces, semi-public spaces, and private spaces. And it is very well known by uh, designers or urban designers, including Kevin Lynch and other, other uh, famous designers, that the public space is the most space that affects the whole city. It's the most space that is found in the city, and accordingly, from that approach, if I worked on the public space elements, and this in the future will be applied, then public spaces, if they are balanced by biogeometry, then we have more balance in the city compared to other spaces. Uh, this has been applied through different two phases. The first one is biogeometry environmental studies is to uh, work on uh, all the natural sources that emanate from Earth as well as detecting the electromagnetic sources in any space and then solve or directly give a solution, direct solution to them to cancel their harmful effects. The other one is biogeometry design of urban forms which is either I applied this or not but by designing the space through biogeometry, then I'm, I'm applying balance in the space without even correcting. It's like will be corrected automatically. This is the, the guideline that I uh, proposed, which is having uh, biogeometrical uh, environmental studies, first detection and then evaluation. And then from that, we have an existing problem that I can directly use the biogeometry design method and create shapes to solve that problem. And accordingly, I would have a balanced urban space. Well, if we have new needs, and I'm not going to do all of this, or I will do it, which is considered a plus, is to using specific for design method to design urban elements, including streetscape, landscape, and so on. And then accordingly, the space is automatically balanced. The first step is detection. And the natural energy sources, if we have a land and we're going to study it, so I need to first detect the underground waters, to detect the Hartman grid, to detect the Gary grid, and to detect the Banker grid. These are the four major energy grids that need to be detected. Of course, there's others that could be uh, uh, known by different geologists. If they detected, that would be a plus. Uh, and of course, the detection here will be through the radiesthesia practicing. Detection for the electromagnetic sources, so if we have the space, I need to detect the uh, cell phone towers in, this, uh, in the surrounding area, transformers, high voltage power lines, underground power lines, and so on, all of these power uh, uh, sources. And the detection is through site observation and checking official map for electrical infrastructure. The evaluation. <clears throat> Uh, for the natural earth energy, the evaluation is basic, uh, is uh, depending on the radiesthesia measuring, but there could be indication to know the harmful spots that could, comparing to other spots, which is the intersections. We said that the more intersection of different energy grids on one spot is the more indication that this spot will be very harmful. So we have here, for example, an intersection of uh, three uh, grid lines. So this is a node of a harmful spot, okay, but here we have like five grid lines at one point, so this is an even more indication higher. Here we have like four grid lines and an underground water. This is an extremely high one, and this is like triple uh, the harm, for example. And also the, the, the underground water is one of the things that can be considered aside at just checking how harmful it is because it can create an electromagnetic field that's just by itself very harmful, even if it's not intersecting with any, anything else. The evaluation for the... Uh, electromagnetic sources of uh, high voltage power line and stuff, the space should be, the studies that should be done in space is two ways. First, we have to know the emission intensity and range of the source, because a cell phone tower radiates a specific radiation differently than high voltage power lines. So I have to know the, um, the range and the radiation that can be emanating from this thing. And this is, I, I mean, known already uh, in, uh, from the Federal Commission and these things. The second thing is measuring the radiation in the space using electrosmog. Because if I have a cell phone tower here and high voltage power here, okay, I, would, I know that this is the field that's going to be, this is a harmful area, and I know that this is the radiation here. But somehow, if they are, these are too, too bit close to each other and they interfere, they can create me a double harmful spot in another area. So also, it has to be measured using the electrosmog. Uh, the correction of the natural, uh, natural energy spot of the geopathic stress, it's like the same that's used in Hamburg. Hamburg. 
specific shapes that could be buried on the spot, uh, under the ground or above. It depends on the situation and the study. Uh, shapes can be developed and then relocated in the area. And here is where uh, the biogeometry will be applied in the urban designing urban space. The aspects that I'm going to be working in in public spaces, height and massing, horizontal and vertical spaces, building layouts, and in public spaces, the streets and squares, and, and streetscape and landscape, there is going to be an example for benches and, or seats, lighting, fountain, bus stops, street sign, and plantation. These are the aspects in the urban space I, I worked on, and these are the design methods. There are four that majorly are suitable and can be easily to be applied, and these are where they're going to be applied in the space. Okay, in the vertical and horizontal spaces, I applied this. First, I want to clarify that um, he, this is sketches that showing the how to apply, just an explaining how to apply the one design method simply in a way. But of course, this doesn't mean that if I apply this, I'm going to create enough BG3 in the space, that's it. No. BG3, in order for it to be uh, 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 strong enough to protect, then it needs to be more intensive and a lot of uh, design principles to be applied. This is showing how to use the biogeometric qualitative harmonics using the proportions between the relation of the height of the building and any sideway where it can be buried, uh, have a barrier and using the biogeometric proportions, like 1 to 1.6, 1 to 1.9, and so on, these numbers. Uh, and here also relation between the sideway barrier and a sidewalk or a road. This is a relation between the sidewalk and the road. And we know, of course, that as long as I have a shift in any, I'm, I'm having a plane space, okay, that's all one. As long as I started to have a barrier, I created another space. So accordingly, the BG3 can reinforce uh, and during these, using these barriers. A relation between the pavers, planting pavers, and the whole sidewalk, and applying it also on the road. This is a lighting column also, as it's one of the elements could be found in the streets. So finding a relation in its location comparing to the sidewalk and any barrier is a plus. Uh, the method of the biogeometric uh, qualitative global system, this is the method that we said it's based on height. And any object and its height, it creates a specific wave where there are some BG3 spots are identified. So the lighting columns is found in almost any space, in the streets and parks. So we can be utilized using it and identify the BG3 spots. And from that identification on the street, for example, I can locate the seating benches on these uh, uh, aligned, aligned it with these lines, as well as bus stops. So accordingly, it kind of be charging the people who are sitting there with a the BG3. Uh, this is also an example of the biogeometric creative global system. As in the parks, you usually find a central area where you find the fountain or the creative shape, and it could be usually having a very strong height. So in considering this thing, I can detect the BG3 spots and then locate or start to build up my design on it for seating, walking areas, or biking paths, and so on. And all of these things can be reinforced also using the biogeometric qualitative harmonics. This method, which is uh, the proportion of numbers, reinforces the BG3 so much while using any design method. Um, there are some uh, forms. When we have an identical object, uh, identical objects, if they are numbered, if they are four identical objects, there are some forms related to this number, the four, which is this form, as you see, it almost looks like Mercedes for shape. This is a biogeometrical arrangement that create a BG3 for only number four. So if this is identical object and they are number five, no, they have to be four, and they have to be this arrangement to create the BG3 quality. For number seven, identical seven, identical object, there's this shape, and for number 12, there's this shape. So. From if we're having seats in a park or in a garden or whatever, we can place, if we have identical benches, for example, so we can arrange them in this, so we're creating BG3 in the context of the space. Uh, for the buildings, also sometimes you can build um, a community where you have identical buildings. So if you, can, if you have four buildings, you can locate them in this pattern. And of course, you have an, 
you have an easy uh, design to, to, to open the space. I mean, it doesn't have to be all close together. They can be spaced. But if I'm going to have spacing here, it has to be the same here. And so on, have to be, so the BG3. And of course, measures, measuring is, have to be applied to uh, uh, clarify if the BG3 is attained or not. This is another way the buildings can be switched up. And it doesn't have to be like in a very rigid look. This is applying the seven method for the biogeometric ar arrangement. If I'm going to have a bigger community and I need to duplicate this arrangement, I can duplicate it, as you see. So the BG3 can be found in this context. But I have to be aware that this arrangement doesn't get so close to this arrangement, so it doesn't interfere. Because if they get this shape, I'm having a new shape. This is uh, not a biogeometrical shape, so accordingly, the BG3 is not attained. Also, we can, the building, the identical building doesn't have to be one building. I can create fewer buildings, for example, and consider that four buildings as the unit object, and then arrange another, I make them identical and create the four arrangement. Same here, I have another four buildings that looks different from each other, but if I'm going to repeat or duplicate them, I can arrange them to be the four arrangement, and accordingly, BG3 is attained. Uh, if we are having um, a community where we have identical buildings that can reach to high amb amount, like 16 buildings you know, sometimes, and, and uh, people just want to <laughs> build like things like this, but just an option for them, if they are having a lot of buildings, it's better for them to follow the quantity of the BG3, which is 16, 19, uh, 28, and so on. It would be also creating BG3 in the context of there. In the streets, as you know that the streets are major, majorly uh, cars flow all the time there, people are walking. So the most common thing that is very sure that roads that cars always uh, uh, is go moving into uh, in, the, in the street. So we know that there's an energy key that's constantly being created due to the movement. So in, the, in biogeometry, there's the biogeometry motion in design, which is related that if we have any movement, if we balance the side wave and the right uh, 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 energy quality, so we are creating BG3. So while designing, if uh, we need to make the central axis of the road, the right side in accordance to the vertical surfaces here to be equal, so any car that moves, it's creating one energy balance key, so BG3 is attained every time a car is passing by. <laughs> For uh, a two-way road, to make sure that the central axis of the road is also in the center uh, in relation to the vertical surface, accordingly, the car's whatever movement, there is a balance BG3 created. Squares. Uh, here, uh, I'm explaining this not from the side of creating BG3, but a co an ancient concept that has been used before, which is using the power spots to serve the community or the spaces. So uh, the BG3 spots that can be identified while we are uh, during the environmental studies, squares is a physical element in the space that always connected to its streets, right? So streets are a physical path. And this is that if we have a good energy into the square, then accordingly, without doing any effort, this energy will distribute from the streets, from the center, going outwards or inwards, all of them will be like distributing into, into whatever the space will take it. So, if we have a power spot that is identified during the environmental studies, then it's better to place a, a square on that uh, area, and the streets will work on distributing the BG3 quality into the city and accordingly serving as uh, balancing energy to all the city. But I mean, of course, this is an abstract explaining, like just one spot will balance the whole city. Of course, an intensive uh, application of biogeometry would reinforce that quality, as well as if there's the other power spots found, then if we put one square in the strongest one and another square in the less stronger one, then there is a communication happening here, and then BG3 is found in the whole city. The streetscape and landscape, I 
designed some models that can explain how uh, in some of the urban elements we can apply the biogeometry design methods. So here this is a bench, an outdoor bench that I applied on it the biogeometry design principles and biogeometry qualitative harmonics. Here I applied the relation where the, the length interrelation was the width to be a biogeometry ratio as well as the height was the width and uh, applying the interface concept here which also can reinforce the BG3 that's created and the L shape as you can see is found here, it's used and we have a, vo a void area here where the BG3 can extra extract easily and not blocking it so this is just showing an example of applying two design methods on an outdoor bench light and colon I uh, applied here the, the biogeometric qualitative harmonics, which is applying the ratio. Every detail in the lighting column can apply these ratio here, 1 to 1.6, and from this to be on the other one, 1 1.9, and so on. And here, for example, taking a cross section, usually the lighting columns have grooving in it. So these grooving are amount of objects, so we can make, rather than having groovings of uh, 20 grooving, we can make them 16, so it's kind of also being in relation to the BG3. This is a design of an example of a lighting column that's applying the biogeometry design principle of rotation. Uh, we have a rotational design here, and we have the biogeometric qualitative harmonics where we have 16 identical objects. They could be 18, they could be 19, they could be 28, but this is just an example. And um, here the ratios also are applied on every single edge of the fountain. So for example, for example, if this design or any intensive design that's placed on a square where the square is placed on a power spot that can make like the square is extremely strong BG3 emitter this is uh, a design for a bus stop where it, sh where it shows uh, applying the biogeometric qualitative harmonics and the biogeometric design principle uh, we have the proportions of the the, the the sh whatever, <laughs> uh, and the, the height here in relation. So we have an L shape applied. I mean, the L shape is one of the common things that of the Tulbrahim uh, design, and it's have been very flexible for me to use. So, <laughs> and uh, uh, we have the centering quality here, and accordingly, the BG3 emits from here. And we have an opening that's in the back side. So accordingly, we're not closing the BG3 on the ground. Now we're having an axis, so it comes out from this area. And the proportions also are, if applied, it would reinforce the uh, BG3 that's created. This is a very simple example of the signs. The, a lot of signs are found in the streets, in the parks. So one simple concept that could be applied is just making the proportions, BG3 proportions. But of course, we can make the sign have a specific uh, shapes or angles. Then we are having more BG3. This is an example showing uh, plantations can be, divi can be uh, divided into a rotational shape. So it creates a rotational movement and we are having kind of a center quality that combines all the planters. We can add more on that if the planter was designed with biogeometry. So this is just to show the applicable uh, application.